live video. You never and quite sure, on. are you? Oh, we're on. We're rolling. Excellent. So, hello, everybody. This is Naked Security here, back again with Paul Duckling in front of the foliage. Um, and today we're talking about a little bit of a scary a security jungle. A cyber security jungle behind you. Uh, I'm today we stretch the mark a bit there. Now. <laughs> <laughs> we can stretch stretch the imagination today. Anyway, there, there's there's a bit of a scary vulnerability that's emerging at the moment. It's to do with uh, SSH, specifically libssh. Uh, but but to start with, I think what we should do to uh, to you all is explain what SSH is for, for our viewers there. So, yep. Doug, what, what exactly is SSH? Very simply, SSH is was invented in 1995 as a way of logging in remotely to Unix and Linux computers, uh, just like you would over a telephone line or with a modem. But instead of using Telnet, where everything's unencrypted and everything can be snooped, what it stands for is SSH Secure Shell. So it's a way of logging in remotely, administering a computer remotely, Linux or Unix, and Almost every Linux or Unix server in the world these days is running an SSH server precisely for that purpose. So if you've got racks of servers in server farms all over the world, SSH, a vulnerability, a security vulnerability that could, that could let you log into Linux servers without a password, that is the stuff of nightmares. And that is why this, uh, oh, you, we got a love, did we? We just got a oh, love. Actually. So yeah, a, a vulnerability in SSH, secure shell, that's the thing that keeps sysadmins awake at night. And hello to Karen from Arizona, I believe, AZ. AZ, yes. Hello, well, AZ, I suppose we should say. That's how they'd say it. AZ, AZ Hi, Karen. of course, uh, yeah. Welcome and back. hello from Sandy. Hello from Joseph, who is saying this is sadly true. Uh, a rule of thumb with social media, don't, uh, oh, don't post anything, get you fired. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's great advice, but it, it's a little bit like saying to someone who's about to get in their car, don't have a crack. Yeah, yeah, I mean, no one intends to, so yeah, if um, in doubt, don't give it out. But in this case, this is about the fact that people might be able to connect into your server and then mess around on your behalf um, without the necessary authorization. Yeah, yeah. Just I want to add something really quickly because Sandy says, Idaho it in the house. <laughs> um, so, so what exactly is this bug? What does this mean for those of us that use SSH? Right. Basically, normally what happens when you make an SSH connection, not always, but usually you'll, you'll connect to the computer and what happens is the client says to the server, hello, I'd like to start logging in. And then the client and the server do this sort of cryptographic dance. And then when the server satisfied that the client has proved its identity correctly, then the server sends a message back to the client to say, you're in. And in this bug, it's almost comically bad. What happens is if instead of doing that, the client saying, I'd like to log in, the server verifying them, and then the server telling the client you're in, if the client kicks off by saying to the server, hello, I'm in, the server goes, ah, that means we're in the authenticated state, and both the client and the server can then communicate without any authentication. So it's basically the client pretends to that the client pretends to be the server, and the server accepts that response as if it were the client. And this bug has actually been in there for quite some time, several years apparently. And so the concern is that somebody who knows how to exploit this, if you have the vulnerable SSH server on your computer, they could be able to connect in, and they won't be required to provide any authentication. In other words, they bypass the whole username, password, public key, all of that stuff. So. Is there, so what are the common applications that libssh is used in? Are there some that we've mentioned? Well, that's the good news. The reason that everyone's really scared about this, I mentioned that a bug in SSH is the thing of fear for sysadmins because SSH is so widely used. However, the most used SSH product is a thing called OpenSSH. Yeah. And OpenSSH does not share code with libssh. Now, it sounds like they should be related. Usually in the open source community, you've got a product and then you've got lib that product name and the lib is the thing that other programmers use. In this case, open SSH and lib SSH unrelated. So the vast majority of SSH servers out there running open SSH are not affected. So if your version of SSH is open SSH, which it is for all the BSDs, for pretty much every distro of Linux, if you're on a Mac, then you're okay. You can stand down from blue alert. Another very commonly seen 
SSH server is a very small one used on home devices called Drop Bear, and that one is not affected either. So we've actually got a really interesting question here from Shan Sandy. I don't know why I can't get my words out today. We've got a really interesting question from Sandy who said, I don't use Linux, but can I be infected by, can I be affected by my inter internet interactions? And I think you've kind of just answered that question for us. Um, like, like, unfortunately, like with most things, uh, well, yes and no. So let's say you're not using Linux. Well, you might still have an SSH server. Every Mac comes with one. It's not on by default. So lots of, in lots of places, SSH may be used even though you're not on Linux. And of course, it's supported on Windows. I didn't mention earlier, there's a very popular SSH version available for Windows called Putty. And Putty is not affected either. The problem is for a lot of home users is that you probably do run Linux without realizing it. Your home router probably has Linux on it and it may very well have an SSH server on it. Now, most people these days are learning if you've got a home router, you go into the administration console and you turn off remote, the remote administration option. And the reason for that is unless you need remote admin, you don't want people coming in. However, some people will get a router provided by that ISP. This is quite common in the United States, for example. You sign up for an internet service, you get a router, they provide the router and they manage it. And that means they do need a way to log in and they're probably using SSH and it can be very hard for you to tell whether they're using open SSH or drop bear, not vulnerable, or lib SSH, which is the minority product, which is vulnerable. And your best thing you can do is if you have a modem or a router provided by your service provider, ask them. And if enough people pester them this time, then they should get, we hope, get in the habit in future when there's something like this, that they'll be more proactive, reach out and tell their users whether they're affected or not. And if they are affected, when they plan to give a fix. So, so something that's quite interesting here is that Kat has said so many, so much was unaccessible last night and she was actually getting a load of 502 errors on 50% on, uh, on of the services that she was trying to use. That, I don't think I don't, that's related do you think that's to this related? No, no, no. Yeah. I think there's, that's a, there just, you know, you have internet problems, then the next day you read about some bug in software that's been around for ages. The bug, as far as you know, wasn't actively being exploited. It was found by a security researcher. It's been there for four years. If you were having problems, then the most likely reason is that your ISP had some kind of outage, power failure, something like that. If in doubt, you can always contact them and ask. That's a good point. So, so in, in response to that, we're saying that perhaps that wasn't related. It may have been, but perhaps it wasn't. It doesn't sound like it's related. No, and it get doesn't. in contact with the provider of that service to Absolutely. see if that was related in some way. Kat has also asked a second question here to say, how can you tell if the router you're using is using SSH? Uh, if you're logged into the router interface, perhaps, can you check in there? Some you can some it's quite hard. The way the crooks find out is that they use one of these Internet of Things vulnerability search engines like Census or Shodan which scans the internet and then for better or for worse makes public the information about the servers that it finds. So you can go out and they will, by connecting to a server and having a little poke around, whether that's legal or not is another story, not actually logging in, but usually you can tell by how the server responds, maybe the exact error message it's used or something about timing. You can often tell which version, you know, is it running Windows, is it running Linux, if, if Linux, which version, is it running SSH, if SSH, which version. So the crooks have a way that they can, and, and security researchers, have a search engine way that they can find out. Just by logging into your router's admin interface, the problem is those are usually, you do it from a web browser, you get a load of buttons and blobs and it doesn't tell you exactly which version you're using. Generally speaking, if it's your router and you bought it and you installed it, it wasn't provided your, by, by your ISP, one thing we recommend anyway, with or without this bug, is find the bit where it lets you turn remote administration off. What that means is you can only connect to the management components of your router from inside your network. So you can do it, but nobody from outside can. Because if you don't need to go out of your house to a coffee shop and then connect home to manage your router, why leave those ports open? Because you're just kind of inviting crooks to have a go as well. 
Now, in response to that, Kat has just met, said, yikes, which I think sums it up quite well. This is quite yep. a dangerous vulnerability um, if, it, if you do suffer from it. My understanding is that m my expectation is that most routers at home will not be affected because they probably don't use this lib SSH. As we mentioned before, just to summarize, the big names you'll hear in, in SSH support, the product, open source products, there's open SSH, there's drop bear, which is a small product, very common on routers. There's lib SSH2, which sounds like version two of lib SSH, but is actually completely different. And there's putty on Windows. None of those are affected. So lib SSH, that's the problem. It's a minority product, but how do you tell whether you're using it or not? So when you mentioned Shodan earlier and, and other services, I can't remember the second one Census. that you mentioned, Census, would you suggest that home users could also use these services which advisor, adversaries are using to, to tell if, if you're vulnerable, to tell if you're vulnerable yourself? You can do a search for yourself yeah. by putting in your IP number. There are, there are a few problems with doing so. One is that many ISPs these days reuse IP numbers. In other words, every time you connect, they just say, okay, today you're at this IP number, tomorrow you're at that one. It just helps them share the love of IP numbers around. It's very rare to have a static IP number these days. So the information you see about your current IP number could have, for all you know, it could have been collected by Shodan when somebody else had it. So you could, see a, you could see a computer that's perfectly secure that isn't yours, or you could see a list of scary vulnerabilities because the last guy you had was a crook or a researcher who was deliberately trying to be insecure. So Shodan is a way of seeing what would the crooks see if they tried to connect to your server from outside, but bear in mind that what you see may be slightly different from the truth. Mm -hmm. So if you, if, if you get scary results from Shodan, find a friend who knows about this stuff and ask them for help in interpreting the results. So in fact, Matthew, who's Kemp commented on this, has said that GRC, GRC's Shield Up, who I've, not, who I've not heard of before, apparently they, they do a live service to check it. Yeah, I, it's I a similar thing. You can, it, it's basically but. a way that you can, it, connect, you, it connects to your router and tells you what's open. Okay. So services like that, if you know what you're doing, or if you've got a techie friend that you can call up at home and say, hey, my IP number is blah, 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 then can you have a look? Someone who knows what they're doing, can, there are a whole load of network tools, a very, very popular, common and useful one is a thing called Nmap. N yeah. Or Zenmap, the graphical Network interface. map. And what that does is it will connect, try to connect to your computer and it'll say, well, it looks like you have a mail server running. Gosh, I didn't know that. You've got a web server running. Gosh, I didn't know that. And you have SSH running. If you see SSH running on your router at home, from the outside, it probably means you have remote administration on. So that's that you're not necessarily vulnerable to this attack because it depends on using a particular version of it, implementation of SSH. Nevertheless, as mentioned, we strongly recommend that unless you know that you really need remote admin, turn it off because best defense is reduce your attack surface and don't open ports you don't need. So, so that's some advice. With, is there any adv other advice you'd like to give to the just general public on how they can not stay be affected by this, other than um, turning off remote administration on your routers and, and checking whether your IP address is vulnerable to this? Well, actually, something that ha did get a lot of techies, or well, maybe not techies, people who are into coding or into using Microsoft's GitHub repository were worried about. GitHub is a public repository where you can store open source projects for free and zillions of people use this and they put documents they put source code they put information and stuff on there in a way that it's basically a content management system and github uses um lib ssh quite proudly and so everyone was worried matt i think everyone's going to hear that's going to sound like machine gunning on sorry them like someone's firing an AR-15 in the background, I'm which is not lawful in the UK, by the way, so it's not really happening. In which, in which case, I'm going to answer Kat's question. She's saying, I hope this is being recorded so that I can share it after the live session, and it is, and we'll upload yes. it after the live Facebook session. Facebook Live videos, when they're finished, they, bec they, they become a static video that you can watch. So the deal is this Microsoft GitHub, it's a common place where people share files. They proudly use libssh, everyone's worried, my goodness, what if people can log in and change open source projects? The answer is that GitHub has had a look and they've discovered that A, they don't actually use the product in a way that exposes the vulnerable code. 
good result. So they've got the, the bugs in there but never actually gets triggered. And anyway, just to set everyone's mind at rest, they've applied the patch which is already out. So if you are a GitHub user and you've heard that GitHub uses libssh and you've heard that libssh has a vulnerability, it doesn't affect GitHub because they weren't affected and they've patched. Great job for So GitHub. by the way, if, if you're... If you are a programmer yourself, or if you look after products that use SSH, make sure which version you're using. If you have a vulnerable libssh version, get the patch out. Great. Um, we've got one more comment from David, who's mentioned that Hello, he David. he has um, he has ro remote admin already turned off on his on his router. He's got a new router arriving in the next couple of days, and he's going to turn remote admin off on that as well. So great job, David. That sounds like you're doing the right thing. Yes, and for those of you who want to be more in control of your own destiny, depending on which router model you've got, uh, there is an open source project out there called OpenWRT. Uh, which is uh, named after a famous Linksys router of the old days, the WRT54, which actually was one of the first that got hacked to run a, to run a sort of community router version. Open WRT, it's small, it's free, and if it happens to support your router model, you might want to try it as an alternative firmware project. It's great fun to try, and it means you can decide exactly which software components and which versions are available on your router. So if you don't want SSH on your router with OpenWRT, not only can you turn it off, you can actually uninstall it entirely so it's not there at all. It's not for everybody. It does require, it's a little bit of a science project. And of course, because it's a, open, a free open source project, they can't support every possible router. But if yours is on the list, you might want to give it a go. It's great fun. Great suggestion there, Duck. Um, so I think you've got an article out about this now that people yes. can read and, and look uh, it up. There it is. That's what it looks like on Naked Security. Can you see that? Yeah, we can see that there. That's, that's what you should look for. It's near the top of the list. Yep. So if you want to know more about how it works and, how the, and what to do about it, um, have a look at that. I've got one more response from David about OpenWRT. David has said he was looking at OpenWRT recently, but wasn't there a malware recently trigger it, uh, targeting OpenWRT? Well, specifically targeting it, not that I recall, uh, there's been a lot of malware that specifically goes after routers because the thing, if the crooks can get malware on your laptop, you're online a lot of the time. So if they want to do connectivity stuff, like run a botnet or attack other people's computers, a laptop's very handy, but if they can infect your router, a, you might not notice, and B, the one thing about your router, it's pretty much online 100% of the time. So actually, routers these days are a high-value target for cyber crooks, whatever operating system you're running. At least with OpenWRT, you can, if you want to get a firmware update or you want to do a patch or you want to reconfigure it, it's all open and entirely up to you. You don't have to wait for your vendor to come up with an update, which might be days, weeks, months later. Great job, Doug. I think um, I think we're about wrapped up here. Is yes. there anything else you wanna wanna discuss before we before we head out head out? Well, just don't panic. Uh, you probably have SSH even if you don't realise it, or you may use tools that 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 have SSH built in. But the majority of places where SSH is used will not be using this vulnerable version. If in doubt, ask your service provider or your product vendor for confirmation of what version they've got, whether they're vulnerable, and if they are, when do they plan to have a patch out. And of course, as always, until next time, stay secure. Great, thanks, Doug.